just when you think you've seen it all, along comes another Cirque du Soleil. For 20 years, a band of French Canadians has been reinventing the circus, creating shows that are ever more magical, daring, exotic, stylish, and sophisticated. But its biggest productions are in, of all places, the land of glitz, Las Vegas. Cirque du Soleil doesn't just dominate entertainment in Las Vegas, it's changing the entire economy of Las Vegas. Las Vegas has been transformed by a circus with a French name. Cirque du Soleil has four permanent shows up and running on the Strip. The first was Mystère. It was so successful, packing them in two shows a night, they opened a second, oh, call it Cirque in Water. Then a third, the R-rated Zumanity. And now a fourth, Ka, in which not only the performers fly, so does the stage. Cirque, headquartered in Montreal, is run by its founder, Guy La Liberté. We have been told that in Las Vegas, you sell a million dollars worth of tickets a day. It's pretty good, eh? For a little frog <laughs> from Montreal. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good for a guy who began as a street performer in Montreal, stilt walking and breathing fire for tips. 20 years ago, he put together his first traveling tent show. Today, he is sole owner of a global showbiz empire. How many employees do you have? 3,000. And how many of them are performers? There's about 700, 750 performers. And how many shows, including your tent shows, do you have up and running right now? Ten, and three in preparation. And three in preparation. Yes. Cirque's tent shows, each one completely different from the next, tour all around the world. But the most elaborate, over-the-top productions are in Vegas. Every night there, roughly 10,000 people pay between $60 and $150 a piece to see their shows. Cirque du Soleil put an entirely new face on entertainment in Las Vegas. Bobby Baldwin is a top executive with the MGM Mirage Hotel chain, Cirque's business partner in Vegas. Ka, the newest show, is at the MGM Grand. How much did that take to mount? I think when the, all the money's counted, it's going to be about $185 million. $185 million? For one show. There are entire hotels in Vegas that have been built for less than that. Most of the money went to build a huge new theater just for Ka, with a giant moving stage that weighs 175 tons, powered by supercomputers and super hydraulics. Just like the acrobats, the stage itself contorts into a boat, a beach, and a battleground. Okay, restart one more time, yeah. Cirque spent four years developing the show, an epic tale of war in which the staging is so elaborate and the stunts so risky that 170 behind-the-scenes technicians are needed to support the cast of 80. These shows are designed to last forever. Some people they said, well, the Broadway show ran 32 weeks or 18 weeks. Mystere at Treasure Island's been running for 14 years. 14 years? But back in 1990, bringing Mystere to Vegas was a big gamble. At the time, this was entertainment in Las Vegas. Fading stars, comedians, and a couple of guys with white tigers. You didn't have a headliner. Mm -hmm. You didn't have an animal. Mm -hmm. You didn't have songs that people could hum. And they thought this would never work in Las Vegas. You, you came up against a lot of that. A lot, a lot. But our approach was very simple. It was about creating a universal language, a show that will uh, be attractive toward every people coming from all over the world. And that was a big thing. I said, well, what language? And they said, it's Cirque du Soleil language. Mm -hmm. So everything they do is, is uh, different. And at the beginning, that's what made it so scary as an investment. Even for a professional gambler like Baldwin. Before he was a casino executive, he won the World Series of Poker. 
Some of Cirque's own people had their doubts, like Gilles St. Croix, the vice president of creation. Now there's a title. Did you think it was kind of a crazy idea when he first came to you in Las Vegas? Yeah, I know that. that. In 89, I went, I went in Vegas for the first time. I was in Vegas and I was like, like a half a day and I said, what am I doing here? <laughs> well, this is so this far away, work. so foreign, so far away from everything I, th everything I think about creati creation. Yeah. And, 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 and Guy, and Guy said, he said this, we will not do a show like Wayne Newton, we will do a show at Cirque du, like Cirque du Soleil. That first Cirque show, Mystère, was a sellout within 10 days of opening. It was the beginning of a sea change for Las Vegas that hasn't stopped. The profile of the typical Las Vegas visitor has changed dramatically over the last couple of years. Retirees from middle America who play nickel slots don't come here anymore. With Native American and riverboat casinos popping up across America, they can find slot machines closer to home. Today's Las Vegas visitors are wealthier, younger, more international, and we're told far more sophisticated. Are you the reason the new kind of person goes there or has the new person come in there for? I think we were there at a crossing road, you know, at, at the turning point of Las Vegas. Uh, obviously, we had contributed this city to grow culturally, artistically. Uh, we had proved that uh, people could be sophisticated. Casino owners in Las Vegas used to practically give away show tickets, hotel rooms, and food just to lure people to the slots and the tables. That strategy doesn't work with the new breed of visitor. They're very uh, finicky as to what they eat, where they sleep, and what kind of shows they go to see. And before, they didn't care. They just wanted to play blackjack or shoot dice and get out of town. But they didn't have shows like O oh, with all of those how they do that numbers. There's 1.5 million gallons of water on that stage. And all the costumes have to be replaced every couple of months because the chlorine eats away at the lycra. Do people come just to see O oh, or, or as their first reason to come here? I think people plan their trips, particularly vacations, uh, with the idea that uh, O oh, or one of the other Cirque du Soleil shows will be on the itinerary. And that has turned the entire economic equation of Las Vegas on its head. I'll make just as much money off of you as a company, whether you gamble or you don't gamble, because most of our revenues are non-gambling. Most of the revenues now are non-gambling? In the Bellagio Hotel, 60% are non-gambling and 40% are gambling. And they're spending it on the shows, the restaurants, and the incredible shops. Yes. You make money off the shops? We make money off of everything. <laughs> Cirque makes a bundle, too. Under their deal with MGM, they keep 50% of all ticket revenues for every show. So, you're a billionaire. That's what they say. This new king of Las Vegas still runs his empire from French-speaking Montreal, where he may have the largest laboratory of circus arts in the world. Twenty full-time talent scouts scour the planet for the best benders and flyers and bouncers and spinners. Then they bring them all to Montreal to teach them the Cirque way. They find talent in the smallest circus in Romania and the biggest stadium in Athens. You get people from the Olympics? Yes. Where do old Olympic medalists go? Cirque du Soleil? Well, that's actually a great alternative. It's a second life for those people. Some of their most talented performers are behind the scenes in the workshops, where every costume for every show is sewn by hand. They dye and paint the fabrics themselves. They hand make the wigs and headdresses, and even the shoes. It's pretty obvious that Guy likes to control every aspect of his shows. In his contracts with MGM in Las Vegas, he demands it. Did they give you 100% artistic freedom? Well, it's not about giving, it's about, that's a non-negotiable uh, thing, but they... You they, insist on it, period, well, and the, you get and it. And they accept that right at the beginning. I have zero control of the creative. It's so like you a, could complain and he can ignore you? Is that what you're saying? He does in most cases, yes. 
gets away with that because Sir continues to deliver shows that sell out night after night. It is important for us to, to, to make sure that every creation that we're doing in Vegas are distinctive from one to the other one because if we start to copy ourselves, you know, in Vegas there's two types of people. There's people who create and the people who copy. And I don't want to be somebody who will you, copy. If you copied, you'd be competing with yourself. Exactly. <laughs> You'd think they finally reached their limit with four shows in Vegas, but they're actually working on a fifth set to open next year. It'll be Cirque meets the Beatles. Guy has made an unprecedented deal with Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr and the widows of John Lennon and George Harrison to do a production based on the most famous music of our time. You know, the Beatles is one of the biggest things that happened in the last century. But you have to be careful. Of course, that's what I'm saying. It's a serious thing. It's a risky thing. But will they come to life in this? No, It'll be the Beatles come back kind of thing? It's not about bringing back the Beatles, but their spirit will be there. That's for sure. Guy's creative team is brainstorming. I'd like to give the, the feeling to the audience that we are all inside the yellow submarine. And Cirque scouts are searching the world for performers who can bring the songs to life. We discovered in India in Rajasthan, little contortionist, and all the number is done while they are carrying a little ball with a little candle on their forehead <gasps> while they're doing all their contortion. And it's so meditative, I would say, to have this tiny little girl who does that. And she climbs a rope while she's doing it, oh. and it's just... Whew. And what song? We need four. <laughs> you need four of those little girls. <laughs> yeah. And which song is that supposed to illustrate? Mm, sun King and Here Comes the Sun. Will there be a fool on the hill? Will she be Lucy in the sky? You reach your point of saturation if you have a fifth show with the Beatles? I don't think so. I don't think so. Really? I think there's a lot of other type of show that we could do. In Las Vegas? Totally. Totally. People say this about you, that you're a real gambler. Always been. Always been. All my life. So Vegas is the perfect place. It's the perfect place for me. Sixty Minutes. We're always on CBSNews.com.